Greetings to all of you and shalom to those of you who are saints. Uh, I hope that this broadcast will be brief as it is one that is urgent as you can see it is un, uh, unusual for the time of day that I'm here but I am I'm incapable of holding or restraining myself any further given the number of reports, quite a few reports that I've received uh, thus far. I'm in my vehicle as you can see. Try my best to be as calm and as thoughtful as I should be. Because I'm aware of the sensitivity of this issue, I'm aware of how complex it can become for some people. I'm aware of the security matters involved here. But I have to speak to this. This government, or before I do so, please tell me whether you can hear clearly and you can see clearly. Guyanese need to know this. Please tell me whether you can see and hear clearly and if you can I would be grateful if you can share this broadcast please please something has something has has gone seriously wrong with Guyanese I said this to you all for quite a while. Something has gone seriously wrong with you. If you are in a position, thank you for the feedback. I appreciate that. Now listen to what I'm saying to you. If what, if you, what you're hearing you think is, is worthy of other people hearing this, please feel free to share this broadcast. Because some of you will share it once you hear what I have to say to you. Something has gone wrong with us as Guyanese people. There's no way that you can sit and allow this to happen to you or observe this happening to you and you are as quiet, so many of you. And I'm speaking to Guyanese of repute. I'm speaking to Guyanese who have the ability to be heard, as I do. I'm speaking to Guyanese who are labeled as I am, influential. Something has gone wrong with you. I'm speaking to you pastors. Something is seriously wrong with you all. I have received probably about five or more reports to date. Good to see you, Pastor Mel. I'm happy that you're here as well. About five or more reports about soldiers, mainly Afro. Guyanese who that they're not taking any vaccine and this is reported in Jamaica before I, I have on my page today you saw that I posted it it's been in, in, in the media for a while where they said that these, these soldiers are going to be sanctioned if they refuse to be vaccinated they did not say in the Jamaican report extensively uh, or how far reaching these sanctions would be. But I know the PVP Civic, and some of you don't know who you're dealing with. I know the PPP Civic. Some of you do not seem to know who you're dealing with. And I said to you in May of 2020, according to Pope Gregory's calendar, good to see you, Russo, shalom to all of you, that this country shall be governed by fear. Did I not tell you that in May of 2020, according to Pope Gregory's calendar? I said to you that that's before anybody was declared winner and all the rest of it, I said to you all that if the APNU AFC coalition should win or turn out to be deemed winners, because nobody won the election as far as I'm concerned, but if they are to remain in office, the PPP Civic will drive fear in you 
in that there are all these sanctions, talk and sanctions are supposed to come together. And, and of course, Mike Pompeo didn't help the situation. He forced, and Cyril Lynch and others, forced their hand in this country's politics to drive fear in Guyanese. So you wouldn't want David Grinch to be there because they want to be sanctioned. Your mind was that you're going to starve. All those things people told you all. You will suffer. You won't get medical attention. You won't get medical aid. You, you won't have food because apparently Guyanese real, don't realize that you are able to feed yourselves. So in your head, you had to get food from the USA. That's how these stupid idiots were speaking to you all, and you believe them. I said to you that should the PPP Civic win, don't forget what Granger was telling you all, and, and those in this camp. Oh, they shoot you, they, the mass, the murderers, and the 1,400 plus uh, Guyanese who were dead, and all kinds of foolishness. And I said to you all, last May, one year ago almost, at least, a little more than a year ago, that this country shall be governed by fear. Okay. The nature of fear, the spirit of fear, is manifesting itself in this nation. Even your preachers are afraid. They cannot do what I'm doing because they, they assume that Jagdir or somebody asked her before. What can Jagdir do to you? I don't understand what about this man has people. Like, what? What does Bar Jagdir possess or none or anybody to make you all scared of them? I can understand grown men holding a Bible and talking about, oh, your God is so powerful. Are you scared of, of Hindus? I told you that this country shall be governed by fear. The PPP Civic has mastered the ability to drive fear into people who don't react to them. I don't think you all realize that yet. The last person, and I'm speaking politically here, who reacted to the PPP after the was going down was Desmond Hoyt. That was the last man in this country politically who dealt with these people. Nobody else. Granger is the worst. I told you that before. He's the absolute worst. I am, I'm aware that my broadcast, this one, would be monitored. I'm aware because I'm, I'm informed in many, many cases. I'm monitored by the PP Civic, I'm monitored by, by the armed forces, I'm monitored by so many people, I'm monitored by the Guyana Police Force. I'm aware that you're going to scrutinize this broadcast, that you're going to try your best to find something that it would say to incriminate me, to find me culpable of some wrongdoing. Whatever you want to do, get lost. I could not care less. Care less. So do what you have to do. It doesn't bother me. But what I dare you to do is to put me before a judge and tell the judge that what I'm saying to you or have said is, is false. That's what I want you all to do. You, you, you aren't trying that yet. And then when you finish with that, I want you to remember what became of David Granger give refusal to listen to my prophetic advice. And you PPP people are going down the same path. Guyana, Your armed forces, your soldiers, are the backbone, are the spinal column of your defense system in reference to your sovereignty and the well-being of your state. I'm not speaking to people stealing buns and chicken and gold chain. So it doesn't leave with that. I repeat. Your armed forces, the military arm of this country, is the spinal column, the backbone of your sovereignty in terms of its protection and the well-being of your state. If the armed forces recognize that any leader in this country is threatening the well-being of the state, they have the power to act in defense of the state. There's no law 
There is no law that encourages the armed forces of a country to allow the integrity of that nation to be jeopardized by dictators. Not Guyana. Not Guyana. Th that is why when they f when with these floods and stuff, who you see going out, they deal with people and stuff like that. Who do you see he heading the CDC in, in, in Guyana? Now, I'm saying to y'all again, there is countries have signed agreeing in law international treaties that every individual person in the UN every citizen of, an, of a country associated with the UN every individual citizen has got the right to their body a nation a state does not control your body they don't own your body if they own your body that is slavery slavery is abolished it is prohibited at the un level it is not a human right it is a violation of one's human right because the human right you have is the right to freedom and the right to life that's a declaration of the united nations Guyana is a signatory to the United Nations. Guyana is a member of the United Nations. And I am appalled that the likes of Syria and Lynch could sit so quietly with a demonic, devilish, wicked self and watch this nation become what she knows it would have been. Because the more unstable you are as a collective people, the better it is for ExxonMobil. You won't have eyes to see what's happening to your oil. You won't have eyes to see what's happening to your wealth. Now, any PPP fool who'll come on my broadcast of course you'll only come in and finish because you don't have the courage to come in when I'm, when I'm here or you have to come with a fake account but any one of you come on my page today who comes on my page today make yourself the moron that you are I won't have an issue doing with you because my challenge would be to tell me one human right declarations that declaration that is being upheld in reference to the vaccination that's what I want you to do The United Nations Treaty speaks to your being in total control. That is why these people are so evil. When it comes to abortion, they suddenly remember, oh, a woman has a right to her body. Well, your baby in your belly is not your body. It's a baby. It's a person. But you have, you have twisted that law to make it suit. The argument that if a, if a, if a fetus is in a mother's belly, she could kill it because it's her body. But when it comes to vaccination, you've forgotten that law. The law, the treaty is that you have the right to your body. Nobody could force you to take any medication. No one can force you to be medicated. That's a law across any UN country. No one can force you to be vaccinated. That is an international law. Even in Guyana, you can't be forced to be vaccinated. That is the law. This PP civic government is walking in your faces in terms of this law. Because what they're doing to the soldiers is they said that if you do not take the vaccine, you shall be sanctioned. Here are what the sanctions are because I've, I've, I've been informed about them and I've seen them in action. Number one, they said you're not going to eat with those who are vaccinated. So if you're not vaccinated, those who vaccinated eat first. That is discrimination. A soldier who protects the sovereignty of the state. If Maduro wants to act the fool, Jagdeo doesn't go to fight anybody. If Finale won't go to fight anybody. Your brothers and sisters who are mainly afro guyanese are going to the front line because they'll be sent by, by Air Finale. And the same people who are supposed to defend their integrity in terms of sovereignty. They're saying if you're not vaccinated, those who get the vaccine will eat first. Whatever is left, you eat after. That's happening in the army. I read it. I saw the text message. I saw the correspondence. That's not no hearsay. They said you're not going to travel in the same company as those who vaccinated. You're not allowed to travel either. So you're stuck. That is discrimination. 
that is forcing people to take the vaccine or having them do it under duress. They also said, and y'all can come for me, I don't care. I would prefer to be dead speaking than alive and be a wimp like you preachers. This government, this government is forcing the military officers of this country, the soldiers, to be subjected to violating human rights treaties in the name of being vaccinated for what? I'm asking you to share this broadcast, please. Let it get to them. They're threatened. The psychological well-being of our soldiers. That's what duress speaks to. Where you force somebody and in their mind, they're not forced. They come and take this vaccine, although I was told that's happening too. You are forcing them psychologically, playing with their minds. Now here's the big one. I've been contacted at least on five occasions or more by different people. Here's the issue here. This Pacific government, you're the leader. If at least the commander-in-chief. And this government is now removing soldiers from their classrooms. If you don't know, when you're in the military in Guyana, you can enter or, 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 or matriculate in certain programs where your, your, your qualifications academically are improved. Yes. This love and caring government of y'all, I want you people to come and talk now. I want y'all wicked devil cronies to come and talk on my page. Your caring PPP civic government, who is not a dictator. Remember you said Grinch is a dictator. Jaggi is not a dictator. Ifanali is not a dictator. Your government is not dictatorial in, in, in the nature. Well, okay, fine. Well, why are they then going to refuse little Afro-Guyanese men and young Afro-Guyanese women the right to an education? When that's a human right too. If they're not vaccinated, you are calling people out of their classrooms, removing them from education programs, and saying they're going immediately and leave? And that is not criminal? This is what we've come to, and you, you, you guys cannot deal with this? Will Harmon write another letter? Is this what you people are prepared to sit and allow to happen to you? Let me repeat it for some of y'all didn't hear me. The Pacific government is leading the charge. They are now take the military. They're calling young soldiers, all this, whoever you are, if you are enrolled in any, any academic program in the army and you are not vaccinated, they are taking you out of that program. That's the report I got and none of you refuted it. Now you could refute it now if you want, but I'm telling you what reports are coming to me and multiple reports have come to me. So maybe you could say they're lying, but tell me, show me one who is who's telling the truth. They have, they are messing with your sons and your daughters, your brothers and your sisters, some of your fathers and mothers. They're messing with their academic qualification, which would affect their remuneration. It affect their money, their pay, their rank in the military. This government that's so caring is doing that to your people. What else do you want to see? What else is there for you to see? What else is there for you to see that will tell you what this government is all about? How loving they are. You are going to do that to your soldiers? Something is wrong with Irfanari. It has to be somebody is, is, isn't telling him what the deal is. You are going to do this to the people who protect you militarily? How could you take a, a soldier who wants to advance himself academically, advance herself academically? How can you target those people and remove them from an educational program because they didn't take a vaccine? What else is there for you all to see? 
for us to get out or I told you before, if they don't want to get, they want to say that because of COVID, you mustn't get and all that. You have a, a, a social media platform. You have Facebook. You're watching me on it. What would it take for you to begin? At least share the broadcast. Do something. Let persons see that you have the strength to fight for something. What is wrong with, what is wrong with you people? It has to be that fear has gripped you and you cannot stand for anything because you're scared of the people be civic, you're scared of whatever it is. You soldiers, you are supposed to know better. You are supposed to know better. You could, you mean tell me that you are the military arm, the strongest, most potent group in this country, and you turn over like little, little, little puppets, roll over like a puppy now, the PP do this to you all. And those of you who are vaccinated, you'll watch your squaddies go through this. That's your intent to do. You have removed soldiers from the educational programs. Put put them on leave. Granger is still, some of y'all don't know this, Granger is still the head of the PNC, the People's National Congress. He is still the head of APNU. You, don't, you didn't know that. He didn't, re, he didn't resign. He's still vying for leadership. Good to see you, uh, uh, Daisy. What has Granger said? What have you heard a brigadier retired said about how soldiers are being treated? What? What? One of y'all tell me. You up near see people tell me. What has your leader said? David Granger. I'm not talking about Harmon. What has Granger, who's the present leader of your party, said? He is a brigadier retired. What did he say? Is this what you do, soldiers? Is this what you do to soldiers? I, I want Granger to say that. How can you do that? How can you people do this? All right, since you all want some help, let me help you further then. Guy Suko, the Guyana Sugar Corporation, is predominantly Indo Guyanese. And you can call racism all you want. I'm telling you a fact. Prove me wrong if you want. But I'm telling you the facts. And I want the ERC to deal with this. The Guyana Defense Force is, and the Guyana Police Force are predominantly Afro Guyanese. Guy Suko is predominantly Indo Guyanese. Can you tell me one estate? In this country, APP told the, the sugar workers, if you don't take a vaccine, you get fired. Or you won't get paid. Or you won't have the chance to cut in the same field as other people. Or you won't be in the same truck. I went to Babis to train for the national championship. I rode behind those sugar estate trucks. And 60 sugar workers are sitting side by side on the back of that truck. And you never said anything about vaccination. You wicked devils. But you could do that to, to afro Guyanese people. And call it Love and care. You don't see that as racism. Because you're scared of these people. The Ethnic Relations Commission can't call that out. Because you're scared of these people. You preachers can't talk because you killed them too. I have seen multiple guys who called the trucks they contract to take the workers in and out of the cane field. I have seen them sitting shoulder to shoulder in the trucks without any mask. Why didn't you tell them they have to take a vaccine or they cannot go to the sugar cane field to cut any cane? Why didn't you tell them that? Why didn't you tell them that they have to take vaccine or they can't go to work? But you could tell soldiers that. You could take the soldiers who are educating themselves out of their, um, their programs. You could remove them, send them immediately on, immediately on leave. You could do that to them and tell me you tell them when to come back. You could do all of that, but you can't do that to sugar cane workers. Why? If you're not racist. If you are not racist, what are you? 
You got grown men with children and you have no chutzpah. You are as weak as whatever. You are living in this country and scared of the people, civic, scared of everybody. You are a soldier, you scare the people. You, I don't know what, what are you going to army for? If you cannot stand up to this, how can you stand up to another nation trying to invade your country? If you cannot stand up to this, you soldiers, what nation can you stand up against? Sunan could walk all over y'all. Anybody could come and take over Guyana because y'all are chickens. John Smith. Why isn't the PP Civic forcing the sugarcane workers to take a vaccine? Why are they doing this to the soldiers? You tell me that. Norman McLean, all y'all in the ERC, tell me. You explain that away to me, please. I'm a concerned Guyanese. I need to know. I need to understand. How can Gaisuko have workers who are, who are allowed to go in the same truck, eat in the same room, cut in the same field, but the soldiers are being told that they, if they're not vaccinated, they cannot eat in the same building. They have to eat after those who vaccinated eat. I want you to explain that away for me, please. Tell me how, how it works. Is there anything that will enrage you people? Is there anything that will get you so angry that you say no more? No more? Is there, is there anything? Is there anything to make you all wake up and see what this government is doing to you? This is dictatorship in your faces. They call Granger dictator because they know exactly what they are. I told you all that. They know exactly what they intended to do to you. If the sugar workers are not being vaccinated and they sit shoulder to shoulder on the truck in Region 6, leave the soldiers alone. You take these people out of their classrooms, out of their educational programs, you are forcing them to take a vaccine. And guess who is the advisor to the president on national security, which includes the soldiers? Take a guess. Mr. Harmon, Mr. Harmon, are you unfamiliar with this situation? There you are, somebody said it, they forced my son. He's doing a college officer's course in the last month of training and they told him if he don't get vaccinated, he would not finish training. A mother just said that. You think I'm lying. So that's somebody else that didn't speak to this person. That's somebody else telling you this. Cadet officers are the ones who will become lieutenants and so on in the army and rise very quickly up the ranks. You see what they're doing? Once you graduate in the cadet program, you are automatically, I think you start a sergeant level or something of that nature. You see what they're doing to y'all? Where is John Smith? Where is the ERC? I'm presenting to you a scenario that you cannot refute. The Guyana police force is predominantly afro guyanese That's a fact. Guy Suko is predominantly indo guyanese The PP Civic has not once told the sugarcane workers that if they're not vaccinated, they're not allowed to go to work. What happened? Y'all could mark me for death all you want. I told you before, you cannot touch me unless Yahweh gives you permission. I don't scare for anyone of y'all. The thing that my God can do to you, you would, be, you would regret even thinking about doing something to me. So I don't scare, I don't have time for y'all. Would you just sit back and let people do this to you? This is the epitome of, dict of dictatorship. This is what dictatorship looks like. Guess who's next? You teachers who play and dance with these people, that's the same thing you'll get. Dance with them. You teachers who dance and play around with Priyaman Chan, that's exactly what they do to you all. Because they're going to fight Hudson and all of them. I don't understand how you people could do this to your own, to your own Ghanaian citizens. How? Priya Manik Chan said, and I have it on my, on, it's live. 
on the it was live on the Ministry of Education uh, uh, page. It still is, and rebroadcast. She said she cited St. Vincent and the Grenadines that they told teachers that if you're not vaccinated, you can't come to work. If you do not come to work, you will not be paid. What does that tell you? She said we're not there yet. Those were her words. We are not there yet. That is what the Minister of Education said to teachers. We, and Selwyn Hudson sitting right there. Whoever your name is, the, the CEO. Sitting right there, Mr. Pastor. Mr. Jesus Preacher. Sitting right there and hearing somebody say, We aren't there yet. But schools will have to be reopened. So what does that tell you all? I'm calling on every soldier in this country. Every soldier, every soldier of every rank in this country, with some degree of decency left in you all to stand up to this. You should never do this because the worst thing you want to have are soldiers who are disgruntled. You all haven't, you don't do world history too well. You don't study African history too well. Marcel Hudson, thank you so much. You don't study African history well. The worst thing you want to do is to have a disgruntled army. You don't study European history too well either. You don't study the, about the Romans either. I am telling you all, the worst thing to have in your nation is your armed forces being disgruntled. You don't want to deal with them. But this Pacific government believes that they could continue to dance as much as they want to dance, do whatever they want to do because APNU AFC is presenting to them absolutely no opposition. None. Let me tell you what has happened to this country. The PPP Civic knows that they are in power at the behest of the US, the European Union, including the UK and all of them. All of them. Canada and all of them. The United, the Guyana, Guyana's government, the PP Civic are aware that they are in power now. That's why they call, what they call Siranj, a fighter for democracy. Good. You have to, therefore, do what they want. Ghanese, y'all don't seem to understand this, but maybe you'll you get it before the broadcast is over. The PP Civic is aware that they are in office today because of the USA, the European Union, the UK, they know that. Therefore, 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 if the USA says that you have to be vaccinated for the country to be called open, the PP Civic has to force you to do it. Because they must, they have to do what their rulers have said. You don't seem to know what you live, the country you're living in. Somebody said all of the soldiers had a vaccine. It's very sad. This country also is facing another problem. The PP Civic knows that in order to get certain grants, which is money, you have to function under the instruction in terms of guidelines and directives of those you want the money from. What some of you don't seem to know is that this country is on the tipping point of an economic collapse. The PPP Civic is incapable, and so is APNUFC. You both lost the confidence of most international entities because you're too weak. You focus on fighting each other so much that you cannot do anything sensible. The flooding has hit your agricultural areas, region Mahaika, Maikoni. Your rice fields are under trouble. Your sugarcane fields, you better hope the, little, the younger ones survive. 
your entire gold mining operation just about finished at this moment. The longer water stays in Region 7, the worse it is for you all. Of course, you know that. Most of the mining pits are flooded. So gold isn't leaving Ghana as it used to. Diamond isn't being found as it used to. You can't smuggle what you can't get or what you can't extract. You are on the tipping point of an economic crisis. That is why if and later finally say we have a natural disaster that's why he said it you don't know why he said it because he cannot get any funding without saying there's a disaster he had to bring himself with after over over six weeks of rainfall he suddenly figured out that we have a crisis when i said no hold on how long will it take for you to figure out the guy is in trouble if and Ali had to finally say we have a crisis on our hand a natural disaster occurring here and that's the only way he can get money because Guyana has no money. Didn't you all tell me the Granger emptied the treasury? In that way you PPP clown said? I would never support David Granger. I tell you that. There's nothing about Granger that I support. No. I don't even want to hear his name. Because I've never seen such a weak person in my life leading any country. Never. So don't tell me I'm no apnea see support. I will never support David Granger. Over my dead body, as they say. I'm too much of a man to support anybody like him. I will support none of you in the first place. I told you that. Because you're all the same as far as I'm concerned. But this PPP civic government is well, well aware. That they are in an economic crisis at this moment. Because if Granger emptied the treasury, how you got money to give it to the to the to Gaisuko workers? How can you give Gaisuko workers two hundred million dollars if at, with, from an empty treasury? You jack donkeys, listen to these people. Something's wrong with y'all. Something's wrong with you PPP civic supporters. Because I cannot see that you can support people who, who make you look so stupid. Something is wrong with you. For you to sit and hear something like this and accept that something is wrong with you. How can you give the guy Suko $200 million from an empty treasury? Can you answer that? Can you answer that please? If, if Granger emptied the treasury, tell me how the sugarcane workers could get $200 million from an empty treasury. Because you're like parrots. You just repeat what you hear from people. And you could go ahead and say, I'm angry. As if, as if you're some psych psychiatrist who's here to help me. I am angry. What do you think it is? I'm, I look happy to you. If the treasury, I'm asking you one more time, you PPP civic people, and Ali, Jaggy Ali, you could answer the question for me. If Granger emptied the treasury, Ashni Singh, you better equipped to answer the question. How can you give sugar workers $200 million as, a, as an aid to help to increase his salary? You please tell me. I don't know an empty treasury could produce $200 million just like that. You all have a money tree somewhere, you dig money from the ground and give it to people? You are forcing a situation because you know that the country is in, is in, is in dire straits. That is why you declared an emergency. You have to have international help because you have none. You, you are in crisis. You, your country is listed as having grown in 2020 by 7 plus percent. We talked it as being the fastest growing economy in the world. Are you guys sense, sensing that? Do you, have, do you have any sense of living in a country? That is deemed the fastest growing economy in the planet at this moment. Do you? Can you tell me if you feel that? I told you all, don't trouble no oil money. I told you that. I told you this oil money I'll talk about, you won't touch it. For a very long time. Tell me please. I want you to tell me, Guyana is said to have been among the top 
fastest growing economies in the world. Is there any Ghanaians on this broadcast living here who can tell me that you have that feeling or the experience of, 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 of benefiting from that money? Do you? Now, when you create a situation in which your military officers, because what some you don't understand is that soldiers may be afraid of you now. They may have families to feed, so they do they do what it is to try to protect their family. Okay. <laughs> Here's what I want you to tell me, or what I want you to realize. They don't have bad memories, though. They're not going to forget what you do to them. So if ever you have cause... At least as we'd expect to happen to these soldiers. If you believe that you could do them, treat them this way, and then they turn on and protect you and your interests, I think you have something coming for you. Because I don't think you do that. From 19... When after... Uh, uh, Johnny Jagan... After... Cherry Jagan died... There is no record in this country of the Pacific leading this nation in a quiet, peaceful, democratic way. None. You could be as mad as you want. None. None. Once Chedi Jagan died, and even on the Jagan, democracy was crushed because Asghar Ali went in there and implemented on the Chedi Jagan, Guyanese having to pay for university education. That is against Article 26, I think it is, of the Constitution. You are guaranteed in law in Guyana free education from nursery to tertiary level. That's the law. Y'all don't seem to know the law. You have to put your house on the line. You have to put all these different things on the line. On the Chedi Jagan, you had to pay. That's where it started for education. Irfan Ali is the person who implemented 33 and a third percent taxation. Irfan Ali was the, not Irfan Ali, sorry, Asgar Ali. Asgar Ali is the person who sought to choke the life of you economically in terms of taxation. You don't seem to remember that either. It was Asgar Ali who implemented 33 and a third percent when to get a certain threshold for taxes. Under Bharat Jagdio. You began to experience the viciousness of what is called the police state. That's a fact. The U.S. cited him for it. So I'm not saying what I've heard. I'm saying what the U.S. said. The same people. The USA labeled this country a narco state on the Barajag deal. That's a fact. The USA spoke about phantom gang and all kinds of foolishness. They did it. After 23 years, y'all talk about when Granger came into office, what did he do? By their confession, they didn't want to have an issue. They didn't want to seem to be divided in Ghana. So Granger didn't go after people as he said he would have done. When they arrested Jagdeo, Granger said, let the man go, leave him, let him go. You can't do that to the leader of the opposition. That's what Granger did. That's a fact. Ferguson said, live, 
I heard her say it when, when they arrested Mingo and others. We have all the evidence in y'all. We had it when we came into power. But we said we're not going to push a button to look as if we want to fight you. That's what they said. So they said they had all of the information on the, on the table, Apnea C, to arrest PP civic uh, leaders, to jail them and all that, but they chose not to do so because they didn't want it to appear as though they were, going, they were witch hunting. So you came in, and in three years, you sat down and were smiling with these people all the time. What happened now? I told you all, during the election period, I told you after the election period, that if you think it was bad before, the fact that the PP Civic is aware that they got the US support, Canada support, the UK support, they managed through Mercury to get support of many nations, painting the worst picture of Granger because Granger didn't have enough sense to know that you do not remove your foreign personnel just before elections. He followed comments in a foolishness. Or she followed him. Somebody followed somebody. And you dismantled your foreign ministry. In essence. This lady, Audrey Jordan, whatever, Jordan Waddle, whatever it is. All of them, you bumping people out of the place because you want to make a point. Your stupid selves. You do all this crap. And don't see what you did to your own people. That made sense to y'all. That made sense to you all. To remove, I told you this, I told you this before going to walk out of office and all that. I told y'all, the worst thing you can do, this before election even came, I said you cannot be sensible and remove your foreign agents, foreign service agents, out of these countries because when Mercury start working, you have nobody to talk for you. What am to Granger? What did you see am to Granger? He had no support from anybody because he removed. Oh, your time is up. You cannot serve beyond a certain time. Good. I told you this. I told you the things you did to certain people. Audrey Waddell is one of the longest serving persons that you have in the Foreign Affairs Ministry. Serve under some under Rashi Jackson, all these mighty people at uh, Ramfell, sorry. All these major men she served under. And the one with the brains you took out because you don't like her. She's not she's not working for you. Good. Now what has happened? Can you imagine that this country is being led by people who know that they had the full support of the international community? That's not, that term sounds familiar to you all. Remember that word floating around all the time during the election period? During the five month fiasco that you had in the country? Remember that? Can you remember how much how often the term international community was used? Good. They got they know it. Caricom, the man Maya Motley came and spoke and fought Granger. What do you have left? This PPP Civic is aware that you have got absolutely nothing in terms of international community support because the international community turned against Granger. What do you have left? Imagine that in the midst of this, you have a government who knows that they can do whatever they want because they have the international community supporting them. That's what you have left. You have a, an opposition who's busy fighting as to who should lead and who shouldn't lead and who should do whatever it is. Soldiers, as I bid you goodbye, I'm asking you for the life of this country to stand for what is proper and decent in relation to international law and your human rights. 
if you as soldiers are so afraid of losing money you've already lost everything you have no respect from anybody anymore you are toy soldiers that's what they'll see you as the head of the army mr. chief there is no way that your subordinates will respect you and that you will sit there and have this being done to them in the name of being in the good book or not in Jagdeo's black book as he spoke of before. Can you imagine that you all can sit and see you? I told you so this is before. I'm just reminding what I said to you because I knew this was going to be coming away. You sat and you watched for five months your constitution, which represents or makes your nation sovereign. You have a constitution of your own. You're not governed by anybody else. You soldiers from every rank sat and you watched the chairman and everybody politicians walk all over the Constitution and you said nothing then you had meetings with Thier and Lynch you had meeting with with, with Irfan Ali and all the rest of it poor Granger and the day that I saw that you watched your Constitution be treated the way it was during the election period, I knew that you were finished. Because there's no military around the world who understands, there's no military leader who understands the potency of a constitution, the power of a constitution, the importance of a constitution, who will sit back and allow people to walk all over it like you all did and just bend along, bend along in merry way because somebody got promotion, somebody got whatever, somebody got promised me. And what is crazy but you all is that some of you will sell the souls of your young men in this country your young military officers for piece of land for some car from some car dealer for some five million dollars off of a Prado I know y'all I've dealt with you people I've lived around y'all and I'm telling you what I know the fact that some of you soldiers I know y'all in the upper bracket could look at a young officer and force him to take an injection which you know is a violation of his right I'm not telling you that there is no law, I repeat, internationally speaking or locally, where you can force somebody to be vaccinated. None. Because my body is my property. It's not a property of the state. And I know y'all, some of you will take a car from a car dealer for your woman. That's how, how some of y'all are so sick. Not even for you. You have your wife, but you take a car for your girl. And that will make you put the soldier's life on the line. Some of you will take a, a deal that some car dealer will give you all a second hand or a used imported Prado or Land Cruiser and take a little $5 million off and you will make your soldiers have to, have to take a vaccine because you want your car to drive. Some of you will take a piece of land less than an acre Maybe a house lot in Providence or somewhere. That's the kind of people we have in our country. And you all haven't recognized yet as you military officers that number one, have you recognized yet that you have people in this country who have weapons that you don't have? Have you recognized that? Have you soldiers recognized that yet? Or it hasn't crossed your mind? You still stuck on your AK-47 days. Of course, it's a very reliable weapon. But have you recognized that this, that this government has not done what they should have done, or, or even at PFC, to make you operate as though you are capable of governing a state if you have to militarily? Do you realize this is the kind of trouble you're in? But it doesn't matter to you all. Because it matters to you is that you have a piece of land somewhere, some some of your some of your, your side chick as they call them, or some of your little girl somewhere who got another man by the way since he can't do anything sensible. Right. That person you to keep her, you have to give her a car. 
that you won't even own. You won't even get to, to your wife. That's what some of you are all about. I leave you in anger. I leave you in grief. I leave you with much rage. But I leave you being fearless. I have no I don't care about anyone of you. Are. For you to have the nerve to remove soldiers who defend the integrity of your state, for you to do that to them, where you take them out of an educational program, where you threaten that they will not graduate as cadet officers if they don't take a vaccine, you're a special class of evil. You're not ordinarily evil. You are not ordinarily evil to do that. For you to do that to your own people, you are special. You don't care. You do not care. All of you pastors, all of y'all, from the Brethren Church, from the Adventist Church, from you Muslims, all of you, every last one of y'all, your silence will turn back to haunt you. I leave you with a statement that I coined years ago. Whatever you are silent about today will shout at you tomorrow. Take note of that. Whatever you are silent about today, including you soldiers, will shout at you tomorrow. Take that to your grave. Whatever you are silent about today will shout at you tomorrow. You remain quiet. Don't deal with these people. You just let them walk all over y'all and you'll see what becomes of you. I would have been thinking probably I know about PSYOPs, I know about all the rest, I know about all the games you can play. Uh, yeah, man. But I don't think that your, your soldiers have that kind of capacity in this country any longer. You're just weak. I told y'all, you house to house vaccinators, vaccinators, <laughs> come to my house. You play crazy and come to my house to tell me that you come to give me any vaccine. Let me send you, chase you from under my road. In case you miss the broadcast on Sunday, I'm saying this as I leave you all because it's on the same umbrella. Tell me, name one vaccine. You military people, because I know you all call me. Or whoever you are, you run with me. Do it. But when you call me, you name one vaccine. One. Just one. I don't want ten. One. Name one vaccine that's issued to Guyanese people. Just one. Apart from COVID-19, the vaccine for this one. Name one. That is administered to a person. And you're called after you have the vaccine to find out how you're doing. What side effects do you have? How are you feeling? Do you feel any pain anywhere? You have any fever? Is your throat sore? Name one. The measles, the mumps, the rubella, uh, yellow fever. You name any vaccine. Just one of them. In which whenever you take it, the Ministry of Health have people calling you on the phone to find out how you're doing. Can you name one? Okay, fine. But if you can't name one vaccine for me, that people have to find out how they have to take it, it means they've been tested properly. Why is it with COVID vaccine, they have to tell you that they're going to call you after you get it to find out how you're doing? Can you tell me that, Mr. Military Officers? Can the doctors in the army tell me that? Can you? Now, since there's a PPP parrot on my page named name Feroz, what's his name? Where is he? Feroz Wahid. A PPP lizard is on my page. There's a PPP reptile on my page. And so since you want to say that, that the best protection against COVID is a vaccine, I'll engage you for about a minute or two. Your statement in itself proves that you have either been under the school, behind the school, or you've never been through the gate of the school. Because you cannot be somebody who sat even in a primary school science class and speak with such ignorance that you've heard people say and it makes sense to you. It shows how daft you are. The best protection against any disease is your immune system.
but you're too stupid and too scaly to have the kind of sense. Normally on a hot day, reptiles have to, have to hide under rock so the temperature wouldn't rise because you are you don't have you don't have the ability. You're cold blooded, so you cannot you cannot cool yourself down properly. External temperatures regulate your internal temperature. So when the PP talk around you, that regulates your brain. You don't have brain of your own. So since you want to come to my page and make yourself a puppet, I'll help you. The best protection against any disease in this world is your, your immune system dummy. That is why a vaccine is put into your body so that your immune system can be activated. Dummy. Vaccines aren't protection. Vaccines are meant to activate your protective system at your immune system to trigger it to make antibodies and once it makes the antibodies then it begins to fight against the disease however mr dummy with one of the vaccines i think it's, it's madonna one of those they've used the cold virus the cold virus which is which is one of the, the, the sars viruses is one of the covid va viruses so they took a common cold virus and give it to a person and say okay then trick your system to think it's covid and then you begin to fight this this virus well, the scientists have told you all that most human beings have, have got some form of COVID because it's a COVID family of viruses. Not one virus is called COVID. It's a family. Maybe you could help Frank Anthony to help you because you're a little too stupid for me to help you anyway. Now, if ever you've had the flu, more often than not, you have some form of a COVID virus in your system. So your, 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 your body has the ability to discern, hey, you don't belong here. A coronavirus and it can fight the coronavirus they are forcing vaccination because it is beneficial to those who know that this is a novel virus meaning it was never existing before and it was not created naturally so they want to try the best to make a lot of money off of it because you have many multi-billion dollar industries who are benefiting from this as you've heard in parliament mr lizard your parliamentarian said that they paid money for the vaccine to come to Guyana. That should tell you something about it. But my question to you is, with any virus that has a death ratio, a mortality rate of less than 1%, less than a percent, what makes vaccination so critical, you fool? If it is killing less than 1%, Less than a person is dying of it. it. Out of every hundred. What makes it so critical? Go and ask your handlers that. Now my advice to you Mr. Faroz Wahid is to sit on the learning channel that PP Civic have functioning now and watch a science class. Maybe you learn something else from somebody. But don't come to the foolishness your doctor's telling you but vaccine is the best protection against COVID. Shut up. You're speaking like a fool. There is no protection better than your immune system. Which is why they told you at the beginning. Did you all remember they told you that? At the beginning of COVID, oh, go outside before they had any vaccine. Before they had any vaccine, what did they tell you all? Go outside. Go in the sun. Take, take, take some sun. I have Chinese even across my street. There are Chinese even across my street. Guess what they did during COVID-19, the, the, the height of the pandemic. They used to come out every day for one hour and walk in the sun. They were commanded by the embassy. Oh, y'all didn't know that, but I'm telling you. The Chinese were in their yard every day for one hour, up until now. They have to walk up and down in the sun. Why? Why? Because they told you all that vitamin D3 is proven to be this, this agent. That is weakening the impact of COVID on your system. They told you about zinc. Then they found it in Brazil that there's, there is a compound in pineapples that is proven to be very, very potent in dealing with COVID-19. But none of that matters if vaccines are already on the table. You know, I told you that when they don't have a vaccine because they know the truth. They know that certain foods that you eat and certain activities that you partake in will make you very, very strong in terms of your immune system. There was no vaccine at the beginning. So they never said at the beginning of this pandemic that the vaccine is the best protection. They never said that. They never said it. 
because they had no vaccine to give you then. But once they found these vaccines, suddenly vaccine is the best way to protect yourself. I told you people, I am convinced that UPP cronies are made in a lab because you cannot be so stupid naturally. There's some lab that uh, that, that Bara Jagdio and those have for y'all that produce y'all. You can't be so naturally stupid. Somebody making y'all. No guy is as, as stupid as you. You are now being manufactured to be this stupid. And that's why Miss, um, and I don't support Apnea but I understand what she said. That's why Mr. Manzo Walton said what she said. You are mentally lazy people. You cannot think. You're stupid. She put it mildly. Because I can't see you could, you could be educated and tell me that a vaccine is the best protection against something you have an immune system. How much more stupid can you be? But I always tell you all, I will always remind you, the shoe is worn by two people, two feet. One that's on yours, another that's on somebody else's. Watch it. Yahweh hates injustice. Yahweh, Elohim, the God that I serve, hates injustice. And what PP is doing to this soldiers is unjust. He will deal with them for being unjust. You don't threaten people's well-being like this. He will deal with you. I'm speaking to you prophetically. Yahweh Elohim shall deal with you. You're not going too far now. I will end with what is an, a, a burden on me. Most of it, have you, you know I've said it all my life. I, I don't want anything to do with political affairs in this country because y'all are just weird. You politicians. But more and more when these things come before me, I realize that at some point I may have to acquiesce and serve this nation so that people can get back on their feet. Because you're taking things a bit too far. If I'm allowed to serve this nation in any capacity, it will be to deal with some of you people who've done these things to your own guy and these people. There'll be a special prison for you, some of y'all. So watch it. Don't, don't ask him to get in politics. We are void of leaders with a heart, it seems. It seems as if Gander cannot have leadership with a heart anymore. You all just run agendas through people. You don't care about them anymore. In the midst of, of your country, four or five different regions being devastated by flood. You talking about anti Maui interests. Imagine that's how sick you people are. You could go to parliament and table a bill in the midst of a national crisis for men to wage. If something is wrong with you, I don't, I, listen here, I don't understand what it takes for we all to wake up. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a flood in the pandemic, in the midst of communities where people's houses have been washed away, the PP Civic has the time to talk about men wearing dress. And y'all don't see something wrong with that. You don't see what America, what the USA is forcing on your throats. Imagine that it is so important for anti men to wear dress in Guyana that you have to, in the midst of a flood, the president declared the day before or two days before that there is a national disaster on our hands. In the midst, after the president declared a disaster, the PP Civic saw it fitting to go to parliament to have a men wearing dress. Something has to, you people have to be especially crazy. I cannot, I cannot reason what is wrong with y'all. And pastors have not said anything about this. Your entire gold mining industry is almost shut down. Your agricultural sector is almost shut down. People can hardly get food to eat. Sabotons reported that, the, the, of course you know that. The prices have skyrocketed. Do you know that to import a continent to Guyana now, it costs almost 13,000 US dollars and used to be 2,800 US dollars before? And GRA still taxes on, on, on these businessmen on, on, for freight? In the midst of this, the PPC could see the need 
to talk about men wearing dresses. This is cr this is crazy. This is this is not borderline crazy anymore. This is absolutely crazy. This is real. This is for real crazy. This is no joke crazy anymore. I went to ask for one pound of cabbage, a pound to feed my household. A single pound of cabbage is three hundred Ghana dollars. And Anand Nandalal could say there's a bill to be tabled in Parliament for man to wear dressing gown. Because the USA knows that whatever they told you to do, you have to get it done. And what they told you to do is to advance Biden's agenda. That's only you could stay in, in power. You have to do what Biden says. I don't normally say these things because I, I refuse to be a preacher who has to have cameras to help people. If y'all believe I never have cameras showing that I'm helping body, get lost because it's, it will never happen. I'm never going to be the kind of person who has to have a show to help the, to help the poor. I was instructed in scripture that if you give to anybody, do it secretly and your father in heaven shall reward you openly. But for the sake of discussion, I'll say something to you all today. I went to get fish from my family yesterday. And while there, a mother with two children, two young children, not older than six years old, showed up to buy fish. While waiting for my, I, I heard her say, uh, tell the woman, she went and sat on the bench and said, uh, give me two pounds. You hear me, Guyanese? Some of y'all have to be in Guyanese to know what I'm talking about. A mother of two children, young children, they wanted school because obviously they have not, no, no online business to deal with, walking the road, said, please give me two pounds of banga, banga Mary. Two pounds, two pounds, two, two pounds. A mother. I don't know me this, but I want to make a point to you, Miss Ali, and all y'all who want to see man wearing dressing gown. I looked at the mother. I said, "What you doing? What you doing? Two pounds of banga? No, this fish." And he said, two pounds." She said, "Yes, I can't. I can't get anything else. That's as much as I could get." I said, "What will you do with two pounds of banga, dear heart?" She said, "I. She said, I ain't going to buy any more." My brothers and my sisters, in that moment. I took money out of my wallet. I gifted the mother. I said, buy fish as a chicken eat. Don't buy no two pounds of fish. The lady shouted when I turned. She said, she told the children, she said, y'all see? Y'all see? you like fish. You see that? You see that? You like fish. You're getting fish to eat. I wasn't happy that I was able to help. I was grieved that in the midst of a crisis in our country, our politician could see men wearing dress as being so important. When Ghanese are starving, you could find time to talk about man in dress. When Ghanese have food to eat, when a mother has to buy two pounds of fish, two pounds of little banga Mary, to feed three people in the house. You boasting about oil and how much money we have in, and another shipment is coming, and the first lady is the godmother of the, of the other vessel coming that's twice as big as Lisa. Yeah, you could boast about that, but you can't talk about what happened to people in this country. You can boast about how, 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 how quick Ghana's economy is growing, but you can't talk about a mother who has two pounds of fish. Now, please understand me. I, you all know me. I don't talk about this, but I have to talk about this in the context of this discussion. And we have billions of Ghana dollars sitting in New York City every day gaining interest. And Apnea FC and the PPC, they cannot agree as to how it should be spent. So it sits there while Ghana suffers. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you people. If, if, it, if it's just to clear my conscience, I may just have to get into political. Say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into politics to serve my people. You vote for me, I serve you. You don't vote for me, fine. At least in my conscience, be clear that, that I tried. Because it doesn't seem as if anybody wants to get up to stand and fight. Everybody's going to be nice. I'll talk to my father because once my, once my father says, go ahead, you're all done with. If my father tells me don't do it, that's fine. <laughs> and I hope he's on the broadcast. And you talk to me after this at some point. If my father and my family, when I talk with them, they say, listen, we got you. 
because I know the I know the vitriol, I know how sick minded the politicians are, and I know that your cronies will find everything to say the moment I said I'm going to to, to, to fight y'all to make Guyana better. But once those who matter to me most, the people in the kingdom of Yahweh, once I talk to the saints and the saints say, possibly we good with this. We ain't got no problem with you. I but I cannot rest with my conscience seeing what y'all did to these people. I cannot. What happened to these soldiers, what happened to the teachers, I cannot. It's, it's, it. The days I sit and I, I, I can be open with some of y'all because I'm a confessor. It's not a sin, I'm telling you. I sit. I sit in my house. My daughter can tell you this. And I sit there sometimes and I had enough of this place, man. I, I, it's time for me to leave. I don't need to be here anymore. It's as if I just had enough again. I, let me just go somewhere else and, and do what I have to get done. And this yet something that says, no, you can't. When I saw that mother and those two little children yesterday, I can't walk away from Ghana like this. I cannot walk away from a country where by a mother has to buy two pounds of fish for children to eat, while politicians drive around the place with, 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 with limos, with uh, uh, land cruises that we, that we bought. Are you talking about to get too old? Who the hell? What's wrong with you people? A land cruise is too old for you after three years? You want a new one? A new fleet? 95 plus million dollars you want to spend on vehicles because it's Granger used them and it's too old? What is all about the land cruiser Granger had? But you all don't want me to run for office because I'm telling you, hands down. All those ministers you see driving around the place in Land Cruiser Prado, you working in Georgetown. But you want Prado to ride drum drive, I will sell it and give it to the poor. You don't want me to run for president. You will drive normal cars. You're not important. Who are you? If the city is flooded, fix it. You don't want me driving some Land Cruiser around Georgetown and hopping in like some, some chief. Why Ghanaians have to try to catch a bus somewhere because you name minister? You, I will sell them. And I'll give it to the poor. Because some of y'all are ministers. You're not ministers in no government. You, you're lords. You are living in the city, but you have to have land cruisers at your disposal. No, you don't need a no land cruiser. Drive a normal, a normal car and fill those small man fields. I'm telling y'all, you could ask me all you want. The, if my father, especially my father, tells me, son, give it a shot. Seek just to clear your conscience to serve your people, I'll do it. If my apostolic brother say to me they don't have a problem, I'll do it. And especially if my wife says to me, it's okay. I know they call you all kinds of names. I know they say everything about you, but go ahead. For the sake of this country and the children try, I'll do it. But this country has suffered too much. Too much. And when two children have to walk in the sun with their mother for her to buy two pounds of Banga Mary, what if I weren't there? The fisherman never said, she never said I'll give you some more fish. No, she didn't say that. Because for her it's a business. I, have to, I, have to, I give the woman money. I said, buy some more fish for your children. You can't give your children two pounds of bang. How could you only two pounds of fish? And I will tell you, I will tell you this without reservation. Anytime there's wealth, like the oil money you all talk about, and any politician in this country refuses to, to have that money released to Guyanese people, I'll put you in jail. I'm just telling you all. So know what you're dealing with. You are not going to cripple my people. I will jail you. So we have no impasse here. If there's money sitting in the U.S. reserves and there's a crisis in Guyana, Guyanese must benefit from it or I'll put you in jail because you're an enemy of the state. You have almost half a billion or more U.S. dollars sitting in the U.S. and Guyanese cannot benefit from it. Tens of billions of Ghana dollars and we can't benefit though we flooded. We have a pandemic. 
a global crisis in terms of, of, of movement of goods and services. Y'all don't care about people, huh? And now you're forcing your soldiers. You are forcing your military officers and dragging them out of school. You pray, man, try and talk about education and you would be quiet about this happening to soldiers. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the for the support and for your mind being mature enough to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't I have I have never been born in poverty. I don't need politics to get money. But I cannot see people suffer like this. And in case you did not know, the children were not Afro Guyanese. Because someone needs some help with this. Because if the only person you can help is a person of your race, you're racist. Just swallow that. If the only person that you can help is your race, you are racist. I was a non. I, I, maybe I need to help some of y'all understand because some of you don't know me. And it's not about me. I'm saying for the point of understanding what our people are going through while money sitting in, in the U.S. That's the point I'm making with y'all. And politicians receive almost, some of them, a million dollars a month, $800,000 a month in salary. Their salaries doesn't change. No crisis makes them lose money. I was in a, in a supermarket, another supermarket one day. A woman came in there to buy one soda pop, soda, we call it Coke, I guess it could, whatever it is, to buy something to eat. I saw her sifting through her little purse. You call it pocketbook in the U.S. Sifting through the find. 200 and something dollars or 300 dollars to buy one bottle of, of drink as you call it in Ghana. No. Uh-uh. I said they had stop. Stop. Don't, don't, don't do this baby. It's okay. Don't do that. I got you. What do you want? And I paid for whatever she wanted to eat. Not because I have much. But because I have compassion. I cannot see my people go through this while politicians are okay. You drive in and cruise around the place and you big. You live in large. There are multiple people and she, the woman almost hugged me in the store. And there wasn't no what's your name, what's your number, who you are, where you live, you're so pretty. It wasn't, I'm not about that foolishness. Guyanese are suffering while the while the World Bank, while the while the the, the, the economic touts are saying that you are the fastest growing economy, you are suffering. You're not benefiting from anything. That's good, Diana. I believe that we can take the government to court. It's called the polls. How um, I, I cannot sit another day and watch my people do go through this. Honestly, I can't. I cannot do this. I cannot. This is this is too much for me to be right now. It is too much. It is too much to bear. It is too much. I cannot believe, and these politicians from APNA FC and PP Civic, y'all are no different. You talk about change and, and, and Guyanese benefit from oil. What has happened? What has happened? You're seeing buildings that are going up all around the city. Guyanese can even rent a building in Georgetown right now. Do you know that? Do you know that the U.S. Embassy and those have got a special list of buildings that you, you can rent? 8,000, 9,000 U.S. dollars per month. You have no access to housing in Georgetown in a minute. Do you understand what's happening to y'all? Do you know what is happening to your own people? If you, if you live in Georgetown, you cannot afford to live anywhere. They push you out of the city. They push you out of the suburbs. They push you into, into, into degraded, uh, uh, degraded neighborhoods. That's what it'll do to you. The houses being rented in Georgetown, right, as we speak, for one plus million dollars per month. You can't afford that.
The government is paying politicians rent in some cases. Luxury tax and all the kind of benefits people have in your country, you can't benefit from it. I am grieved. Honestly, this 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 is painful. This is painful. This is painful. And I cannot take it anymore. Let me be quick to tell you, I will never abandon preaching the gospel. So don't even let it cross your mind. I'm not like those politicians who leave and, 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 and go somewhere to, to bleed. Be, not, not me. It will be a secular job of mine to work for the, for the, ch the children of this nation. Not, not some of you old people. The children of this country, they, they, I am burdened for them. I am grieved for our children. They were not in any online class. They were searching for food on the road with their mother. And these people make that's the keyboard. They have the calls being made. Politicians are all in it too. Rent your house. You you have all the contacts with with, with, with all these embassy and ambassadors and stuff. You renting your house to, to expats. I'll have a special program once I speak to my father. If he, if he says no, then I'll inform him I'm not dealing with this. If he says yes, then I'll do it. Because I respect my father. I honor him as a man of integrity and Yahweh. And my children know how I feel about my father's words. I don't play with it. But we cannot continue to, we cannot go down this road anymore. It, it's impossible for us to go down this road any further. There, 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 there isn't much more that we can take. APNU AFC is in Parliament taking a salary every month and then telling PP Civic they're illegitimate. How y'all could how could y'all rush? How could y'all support these people? So you have a legitimate opposition but an illegitimate government? Is that how stupid you people could be, man? You could just float with this and, and think it's okay? You have an official leader of the opposition who says that the president is illegitimate. So what are you? What are you, Mr. Harmon, if, if you are officially occupying an office of opposition leader? You're crying that they cut your budget. What budget you need? You said Ali is illegitimate. What, how do you have a budget for, for opposition leader? How do you have a budget that you complain for? You want, they cut your, they slash your budget. You shouldn't have a budget in the first place. Because if the government is illegitimate, you're illegitimate too. Don't you see what is happening to y'all in this country, man? Then we have got, and I'll speak on another broadcast, but I'll just give you a hint of it because most of you know it. The, the, the death rate for COVID is, is, has skyrocketed. When they said, 200 plus thousand Guyanese have been vaccinated. The death rate for COVID is now skyrocketing. It's amazing. The, the science of, of your vaccine is just amazing. More people are dying after one third of the population already vaccinated. Yet, they are forcing, forcing grade six students to go write this common entrance mock exam and all kinds of garbage. And they haven't, they have it on track. I think we have what, 26 or 30 deaths already for the month of June. June isn't, uh, hasn't finished yet. But they're already having children go to lessons and all that every day. Six, 12 year old, 10 year old. Go to school because you have to write this, 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 this common entrance exam. When you want to talk about careless people, 
We have quite a few of them in Ghana before your faces. <laughs> Past mail. Anyways, uh, saints and others, thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm, I'm leaving you now. It's been a while. I thought it would have been brief. But we have to do something about this. I'm asking you, please use your social media platform. Please, just, just, just hit share and let the broadcast. If you can't leave your house to go and protest, at least you can have your phone being used as such. Just share the broadcast with people so they can see what the soldiers are being faced with. They can see that the PP civic government is removing military officers from classrooms and programs because they're not being vaccinated. That is that is under duress. That is that is against the law. I thank you all so much for your time. And I appreciate your being here with me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Collins. I appreciate that from all of you, Ms. Court and everybody else. Uh, the order of GRE remains the same. No progress, Mr. Court. I'll report on that in, in a few. Um, we told you we have to wait until the rainy season ends, whenever it ends. And, and Londoners can accept that too. But I'll leave it to you all soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much. It is well. Thank you, Lancelot. Goodbye. Please share the broadcast. I'm asking you again. I don't normally do this, but you need to. That share it in protest. Because it is not right. It is not right for them to do this to soldiers. Please. It is not right. Alright. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Favor. Thank you, my sister. Thanks to all of you. I remain grateful. 